In today's video, we shall discuss about the forensic applications of PCR. But before that, do subscribe to my channel and let me know your opinions and suggestions in the comment box. Today, we shall talk about the polymerase chain reaction, forensic applications of PCR, examples of cases solved with PCR technology, and the future of PCR and forensic analysis. So what is polymerase chain reaction? PCR is an in vitro method in which a small amount of DNA can be copied many, many times in a short time period. PCR was invented in the early 1980s by Carrie B. Mollis, who later shared a Nobel Prize in chemistry for his work. Polymerase chain reaction, or PCR, is a technique to make many copies of a specific DNA region in vitro in a test tube rather than an organism. PCR relies on a thermostable DNA polymerase, TAC polymerase, and requires DNA primers designed specifically for the DNA region of interest. In PCR, the reaction is repeatedly cycled through a series of temperature changes, which allow many copies of the target region to be produced. PCR has many research and practical applications. It is routinely used in DNA cloning, medical diagnostics, and forensic analysis of DNA. It is basically a three-step analysis. The first step is denaturation, which includes heating the reaction strongly to separate, or denature, the DNA strands. This provides single-stranded template for the next step, followed by annealing, which involves cooling the reaction so the primers can bind to their complementary sequences on the single-stranded template DNA. And finally, extension by raising the reaction temperatures so TAC polymerase extends the primers, synthesizing new strands of DNA. Moving on to the forensic applications of PCR. PCR is a molecular biology technique that amplifies small segments of DNA, making it a powerful tool in forensic analysis. The technique can be used to analyze DNA samples from various sources, including blood, semen, hair, saliva, and tissues, and has a wide range of applications in forensic investigations. For the PCR to be a useful application in forensic science, the selected target sequences should carry several allelic variations possibly all less than 1,000 base pair in size. The best known of the PCR systems used for forensic science are the D1S80 and the HLA-DQA1 systems. A third PCR system, the mitochondrial D-loop region, has more recently fascinated a deal of attention by forensic scientists. This is a highly polymorphic DNA locus present on the mitochondrial genome. When the D-loop locus is once amplified, it is best studied by direct sequencing of the PCR products. This system is likely to receive a great deal of interest with the aid of modern automated DNA sequences. Following are the forensic applications of PCR. DNA profiling, human mitochondrial DNA quantification, victim identification, forensic DNA databases, identification of body fluids, detection and quantification of non-human species and paternity testing. So, how's it done? In real forensic tests of DNA from a crime scene, Technicians would do an analysis with a number of different markers which is used to compare between the crime scene DNA and the suspect's DNA. Also, the markers used in a typical forensic analysis don't come in just two different forms. Instead, they're highly polymorphic, that is they come in many alleles that vary in tiny increments of length. The most commonly used type of markers in forensics, called short tandem repeats, STRs, consist of many repeating copies of the same short nucleotide sequence, typically, two to five nucleotides long. One allele of an STR might have 20 repeats, while another might have 18. By examining multiple markers, each of which comes in many allele forms, forensic scientists can build a unique genetic fingerprint from a DNA sample. In a typical STR analysis using 13 markers, the odds of a false positive two people having the same DNA fingerprint are less than one in 10 billion. Now we shall see this applications in detail. DNA profiling or DNA fingerprinting. PCR can be used to amplify specific regions of DNA, such as short tandem repeats which are highly polymorphic and vary between individuals. By comparing the STR profiles of DNA samples from crime scenes with those of suspects or victims, forensic scientists can identify or exclude individuals as possible contributors of the DNA evidence. Suppose that you are working in a forensics lab. You have just received a DNA sample from a hair left at a crime scene, along with DNA samples from three possible suspects. 
Your job is to examine a particular genetic marker and see whether any of the three suspects matches the hair DNA for this marker. Humans are diploid, meaning that they have two copies of most of their DNA. Thus, there will be two copies of the marker we are examining in each of the DNA samples. If a person has two different alleles of the marker, is heterozygous, two different sized bands, 200 base pair and 300 base pair, will be amplified during PCR. These will appear as bands of DNA in the gel at the 200 base pair and 300 base pair locations. If a person has two copies of the same allele, is homozygous, only one band will be amplified during PCR. If the person is homozygous for the 200 base pair allele, only a 200 base pair band will be visible on the gel. Similarly, if the person is homozygous for the 300 base pair allele, only a 300 base pair band will be visible on the gel. You perform PCR on the four DNA samples and visualize the results by gel electrophoresis, as shown here. Which suspect's DNA matches the DNA from the crime scene at this marker? The marker genotypes of the DNA samples are Crime scene DNA, homozygous 200 base pair allele. Suspect 1, homozygous 300 base pair allele. Suspect 2, heterozygous. Suspect 3, homozygous 200 base pair allele. Both the DNA sample from the crime scene and the DNA sample from suspect 3 are homozygous for the 200 base pair version of the marker. That is, the two samples match for this marker. There is a fascinating story about Helena Greenwood. Dr. Helena M. Greenwood, a brilliant DNA scientist, was sexually assaulted and robbed in 1984. The suspect, David Paul Frediani, was arrested based on fingerprint evidence but was released on bail. Helena, set to testify against him was tragically murdered in 1985, just before his trial. The crime appeared personal, with suspicions pointing towards Frediani as the prime suspect due to the impending trial. Despite intense personal struggle evident from Helena's defensive wounds, concrete evidence linking Frediani to the murder was lacking. The case went cold for 14 years until 1999, when advancements in DNA analysis, particularly the PCR method, allowed investigators to match tiny skin particles under Helena's fingernails to Frediani. This breakthrough led to Frediani's arrest and subsequent conviction for Helena's murder in 1999. The case highlighted the intersection of Helena's expertise in DNA research and the advancements in forensic technology that ultimately brought justice for her tragic death. Another application is the identification of body fluids. PCR can be used for the identification of body fluids at crime scenes by detecting the presence of specific DNA sequences that are characteristic of particular body fluids. Different body fluids contain different types of cells, enzymes, and other biomolecules, which can be used to identify the source of a stain. Blood. The presence of human hemoglobin can be used as a marker for blood. Semen. The presence of sperm cells can be used as a marker for semen. Saliva. The presence of amylase can be used as a marker for saliva. Urine. The presence of uroplakin can be used as a marker for urine. Human mitochondrial DNA quantification. Mitochondrial DNA analysis offers a significant advantage to the forensic geneticist in circumstances when it has not been possible to obtain a standard nuclear DNA profile, such as in severely degraded DNA, bones, and hair shafts. The use of a TACMAN real-time PCR assay for quantification of mitochondrial human DNA from forensic specimens was first described by Andreessen et al. 2003. By targeting a 142 base pair region spanning over the genes for tRNA lysine and ADP synthase 8 that can be amplified in a single PCR reaction. Detection and Quantification of Non-Human Species Forensic analysis of non-human evidence is gaining importance and becoming widely used in forensic laboratories for the identification of animal material recovered from the crime scene, usually per hairs. ASYB or Green Quantitative Real-Time PCR assay has been developed for the quantification of genomic DNA extracted from domestic cat samples, Minouti Raymond et al., 2003. Victim Identification PCR can be used in victim identification during disasters, mass casualties, or other situations where human remains are recovered. In such cases, PCR can be used to analyze DNA from the remains and compare it to reference samples from family members or other known individuals to identify the victim. PCR-based victim identification is a powerful tool that has been used in numerous disasters and mass casualty events, including terrorist attacks, Hurricane Katrina, and the Indian Ocean tsunami. Paternity Testing 
PCR can be used to analyze the DNA of a child and their alleged father or mother to determine whether the two are biologically related. Custody disputes. Paternity testing can also be used in custody disputes to determine who has legal rights and responsibilities for a child. Forensic DNA databases. PCR is used to generate DNA profiles that are stored in forensic DNA databases. These databases store DNA profiles obtained from individuals who have been convicted of a crime or who have been arrested and charged with a crime. The DNA profiles can be compared with DNA evidence collected from a crime scene to identify suspects or to link multiple crime scenes to the same perpetrator. Future of PCR and Forensic Analysis Advancements in PCR Technology PCR technology is continually evolving, with new methods and improvements in accuracy and sensitivity. One example is the development of digital PCR, which can provide greater precision and sensitivity in detecting small amounts of DNA. Expansion of DNA databases. DNA databases are becoming more widespread, allowing for more comprehensive and accurate DNA profiling. Integration of PCR with other technologies. PCR can be integrated with other technologies, such as next-generation sequencing and microfluidics, to increase the speed and accuracy of DNA analysis. Use of PCR in non-human DNA analysis. PCR can also be used in the analysis of non-human DNA, such as animal DNA, which can be useful in wildlife forensic investigations and conservation efforts.